Well, it is always great when we can talk March Madness. Over the weekend, it was MAC Madness here in Cleveland with the MAC tournament and the champions of the MAC, the Akron Zips. They get the automatic bid into the NCAA tournament. Coach John Gross now joining us. And Coach, I know you had the automatic bid. You knew you had the automatic bid. You knew you were in the tournament. But gosh, that selection show was taking a while. I was like, wait a minute, they're in, right? <laughs> I tell you, Nick, some things, though, are worth waiting for. <laughs> so we, uh, we had to have some patience, that's for sure. We, we knew we were in and uh, kept trying to guess where and who and just having some fun with it. You know, obviously, we ended up uh, in Portland and playing against a, a great opponent. Coach, I had a chance to, to see you and the team on Tuesday down there at the JAR, and you guys just seemed laser-focused heading into the MAC tournament. But just give us an idea of what those last three days were like, the tight game with Buffalo, you knock off Toledo, you beat your rival. Just was that a whirlwind or what? No question, Nick. It was, am it was amazing, though. I just told our crowd that was here for our selection show that, you know, three words for me, when I think about the three days we just went through, one's thankful, you know, just thankful for the opportunity. Obviously played three great teams back to back to back, you know, thankful for our guys and their effort, for our fans, for Zips Nation. Two was fun. I just, I mean, I, I thought it was a blast. And As I've gotten older, I've tried to learn to enjoy uh, the moment more because uh, it's hard. It's hard to advance in conference tournaments. It's hard to win them. It's hard to get to the championship game. And, um, uh, you know, I wanted our guys to have fun. And then lastly, happy, just happy for our players, you know, that they get an opportunity to participate in March Madness. None of our guys have had the chance to do that. It's been a goal they've had. And some of those guys are still with us that were on the 1920 team, 2019-20, that were the number one seed and broke the school record for regular season wins or tied it. And we had a great team and didn't get the opportunity to compete in the MAC tournament. So I think they're even more grateful. And then happy for my AD, he sets his first men's basketball uh, tournament, conference tournament that he's won and, and uh, opportunity, obviously, to play in the NCAA tournament. So there's a lot of things and a lot of people to be happy for. Coach, when you were an assistant coach with Thad Mata at Ohio State, you guys went to the dance. You did it at Ohio U as the head coach. You did it at Illinois. You're doing it again now with Akron. I know it's for you. You, you always make it about the kids and your student athletes. But for you, Coach, I mean, this has to be pretty cool. <laughs> Oh, it's awesome. It's, and I'm happy for my family. It's interesting, you know, the, you learn to appreciate it with what happened with the COVID team in 2019-20 and as good as that team was, and there's no guarantees. You know, you watch that across conference tournaments throughout the country over the weekend, but in the previous week, week, the week and a half. But, but uh, that team was good enough to do something like we, this team is doing right now and didn't have the chance to do that. And then you go back uh, to the last time that, that Akron had been in it, um, and that we as a staff had coached in it, ironically, the same year in 2013. So, you know, it just makes you appreciate it more and how hard it is to do it. Um, but you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, it's, it's awesome. Wanted to share in the moment as best we could with our family last night. My daughter went to the presser with me and she turned seven today and it was her <laughs> birthday. And, and uh, right as I'm coaching or shaking Coach Senderoff's hand, who I have a lot of respect for, somehow, some way, my 12 year old got onto the court <laughs> and starts to tackle me and hug me right as I'm shaking Rob's hand. So uh, when I talk to Rob, I owe him an apology. I, I, uh, I'm just glad he tackled me instead of Rob. Because you, know? <laughs> you never know with my son. But, uh, yeah, no, we've really tried to enjoy it, and it's been a lot of fun. These are great memories you guys have created. Coach, you know, we're not going to get into X's and O's. You have any, I mean, I know you know about UCLA, but you, you haven't dove into film or things like that. But the first thing I think of, Mick Cronin, they're coming off a of Final Four. It's going to be a tough matchup, right? Yeah, no question. And I have some of those same thoughts, and I got a lot of respect for Coach Cronin. In fact, we hired you know, our associate director of basketball operations and analytics as a guy that worked for him back in the day at Cincinnati and came highly recommended and, and uh, certainly respect him as a coach and what he's done and how his team plays and really enjoyed watching his team throughout the year when I get a chance to peek at him. And obviously last year during their tournament run in Indianapolis. Uh, and also when you think of UCLA, just think of their tradition. And, you know, it's a great opportunity, a great challenge against a really, really good basketball team. And and, uh, you know, we'll look forward to preparing here over the next few days. Coach, I, I have to tell you, you guys and, and you, you have taken the right mentality through it all. And even though 
the NCAA tournament is magnified. You've said it yourself. You've got to take it one possession at a time, one game at a time. You were saying that to me before you played Buffalo in the quarterfinals. It really doesn't change. I know the opponent is bigger and the, the size of the, the stage is bigger, but you really have to keep that same concept, right? No question, Nick, and that's what's, I think, really served us well. The guys have bought into that. Not only one game at a time, the other night, I mean, we're at the end of the game with two minutes to go, and I've got guys like Enrique and Greg saying, don't get caught up in the hoopla. There's still two minutes left to go. One possession at a time, fellas. One possession at a time. And when your players think that way, you know, then you got a chance. And so those guys have uh, really embraced, uh, embraced that. And... Uh, they enjoy playing together with each other. Our chemistry is really good. And, you know, obviously now we got to try to put a game plan together and try to go out and execute against a great opponent. Coach, last thing for you, and congratulations on everything. For you as a, as a head coach, how important is it to balance enjoying this while also recognizing this is going to blow up now? I mean, guys like Ali Ali, household name, Enrique Freeman, Xavier Castaneda, we know you and your staff. I mean, how do you make sure it just doesn't get – too big. <laughs> yeah, well, I think the main thing is, you know, and I think we operated that way over the weekend. Like, we know it's an important game. The games over the weekend were. But uh, in the grand scheme of everything, I think sometimes when you make something too important, then, you know, your mind and your heart aren't in the right place and you've got, you know, you can become tight a little bit. So we, we don't want to do that. We've had fun. Shoot, we're playing music in the locker room before the game, after the game, on the bus trips at the end of the year, you know, dancing in the aisle, you know, having fun with each other um, has been important. Uh, and I want those guys to have fun and enjoy it, uh, enjoy this opportunity. So you're right, Nick, there's a fine line, man, and that's why we talk constantly to them in tournament play about being mentally tight and focused uh, on our preparation and our game plan, but at the same time physically loose. Coach, I first met you when you were an assistant coach at Ohio State, and through all the places you've gone, all the, all the places you've been, the success you've had, you've always stayed the same guy. Where does that come from? Probably my parents, um, and then just the coaches I've had during my, um, you know, my career um, as a player, and then obviously the coaches I've worked for and with. Um, but, you know, my, my parents are that way. Um, they, they are. They, you know, my, my, I'm lucky because dad, mom, stepmom, uh, who, who passed here recently, uh, stepdad, they're all great. Um, they they very, very often, not very often do any of them have bad days. So that's kind of where the no energy vampires allowed concept uh, comes from uh, in our family. You know, always be thankful and be grateful and, and to understand that when you do something like we just did yesterday, the amount of people that are involved to do something like that, that special is, you know, it's impossible to name them all. Um, it takes everybody. Uh, you can't do something like that at this level by yourself. And so that's what makes it fun is I get to work with some really cool people. You get to develop relationships with people over the course of my career that you value and you know, that, that's what it's about, that and, and, and having a chance to win. And so, you know, fortunately, I've been blessed because we've been able to do uh, both of those things. Coach, listen, really appreciate the time. We are all pulling for you. I know here in Cleveland, throughout Northeast Ohio, down there, all the way down to Akron and Canton. I'm sure even in Columbus a little bit, you got a lot of people pulling for you. And uh, we wish you all the best. Go take it to UCLA. <laughs> hey, appreciate it, Nick.